This is a story with more turns than a South Carolina country road. It begins in the small town of Hampton just over 100 years ago when residents elect Randolph Murdoch as the 14th Circuit Solicitor. Most states call them district attorneys. For more than 85 years, three generations of Murdochs with the supreme law for more than 3,200 square miles of low country. It's pretty well recognized in law that in criminal justice, there is no figure more powerful than the prosecutor. Keeping residents on the legal straight and narrow across five counties kept the Murdoch family well connected to law enforcement. And probably know each other pretty well socially, too. That's very often the case here, yes. The family's grip on the solicitor's office ended in 2005 when Randolph Murdoch III retired. But the family also has a very successful law firm with offices in three counties known for winning big settlements for their clients. For 53-year-old Alex Murdoch, known as Big Red to his friends, working as an attorney at the family firm offered plenty of reward. Each evening, he'd head home to his more than 1,700-acre estate and his beautiful family. He seemed to have everything anyone could ever want until one terrible night this past June. Moselle Road, I've been up to it now, it's bad. Murdoch says he returned home to find his wife and son shot to death out near the dog kennels on their vast property. And are they breathing? No, ma'am. Okay, and you said it's your wife and your son? My wife and my son. 52-year-old Maggie Murdoch was shot multiple times, sources say, with a semi-automatic rifle, while 22-year-old Paul Murdoch had been shot at least twice with a shotgun. The gruesome scene suggested two shooters, leaving many wondering if the family's long legal history had played a role. Seth Stoughton is a former police officer turned attorney and professor. Two weapons, two people possibly would suggest maybe this had been planned carefully. It's certainly not something that I would expect an investigator to rule out based on the evidence that I'm aware of that's been publicly available. Alex Murdoch and his surviving son put up their own money for a $100,000 reward for information. But at the bottom of the notice was an odd catch. The tip must be submitted to law enforcement on or before September 30th. Have you ever heard of an expiration date on a reward? I, I have not. South Carolina's son and mother who were gunned down. It wasn't the only strange thing. In an interview on ABC's Good Morning America, Murdoch family members said their nephew, Paul, had been getting threatening messages online before he was killed. I didn't think it was a credible threat. If it was, I would have tried to do something or notified someone. But I guess... No. Maybe I made a mistake. The family says the threat started after a fatal boating accident. Paul, what bridge is this? 911, where's your emergency? We're in a boat crash on Arthur Street. Okay. We have someone missing. February 2019, Buford, South Carolina. Paul Murdoch and five friends, all underage, out for a night of partying. Images from investigation files obtained by CNN show Paul Murdoch buying beer and then buying more drinks at a bar. Everyone gets into a boat. Witnesses told investigators Paul was driving. Investigators say the 17-foot boat struck a bridge at high speed. 19-year-old Valerie Beach was thrown into the water. Please send someone. Oh, they're coming, okay? There's six of us and one is missing. It would take a week to find Beach's body. All right. Paul Murdoch was charged with boating under the influence, resulting in death, facing up to 25 years in prison. He pleaded not guilty. Despite the serious charges still pending at the time of his killing, the night of the crash, a dash cam recording obtained by the Post and Courier captured the voice of a passenger on the boat, suggesting Paul wasn't likely to face serious consequences. Y'all know Alec Murdoch? Oh, yeah, I know his name. That's his son. So good luck. It wouldn't be the first time someone suggested the Murdoch name could influence the outcome of an investigation. In the aftermath of the mother and son murders, SLED, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, made a stunning announcement. During their investigation, they said they found something. They wouldn't say what, but as a result, they were going to reopen an investigation into another unsolved death from 2015. Where's your emergency? Uh, I just pulled out of um, Crockettville Road. Mm -hmm. I see somebody laying out. And we'll get an officer headed out that way to see what's going on. I ain't moving or nothing like that, but uh, somebody's laying out. Okay. Uh, I'm 
somebody gonna hit it. Somebody gonna hit it. 19-year-old Stephen Smith was found dead in the middle of the road in the middle of the night just outside Hampton. There were no witnesses, but among classmates and friends, there was a lot of talk police files show. And one family name kept surfacing, a name many were reluctant to talk about to police, leaving investigators obviously frustrated as interview recordings suggest. You know, a lot of people seem a little nervous to say the name Murdoch. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, I, I understand that they're uh, pretty big down there in Hampton, but um, I'm out of Charleston, and that name doesn't mean anything to me. So I, I want you to feel, you know, like you don't have anything to worry about. No one's been arrested, and no publicly released evidence links anyone in the Murdoch family to Smith's death. Then, another shock. On September 3rd of this year, the powerful family law firm announces they discovered Alex Murdoch had allegedly stolen significant funds from the company. Sources tell CNN it was millions of dollars. Murdoch had his own stunning admission, saying, the murders of my wife and son have caused an incredibly difficult time in my life. I've made a lot of decisions that I truly regret. I'm resigning from my law firm and entering rehab after a long battle that has been exacerbated by these murders. His lawyer confirming an opioid addiction. But the biggest shock was still to come. He was shot in the head while changing a tire. This the very next day, Alex Murdoch says as he stopped on the side of the road looking at a leaky tire, Murdoch says a man in a pickup truck drove past, then turned around in a church parking lot and returned. After a brief conversation, Murdoch told investigators the man shot him in the head. He was out of the hospital two days later. So many wondered if the shooting had been staged. Murdoch's spokesperson put out a statement denying it was self-inflicted. But the church where the truck turned around might just be the answer to investigators' prayers. The church has a number of security cameras, a few which look in the general direction of where the shooting occurred down that way, and another that looks directly into the parking lot where Murdoch says the pickup truck turned around. If there's video, it could provide clues about a suspect and Alex Murdoch. What do you make of the shooting of Alex Murdoch? I think it's going to tremendously complicate the investigator's job, both for that shooting and also for the shooting of his wife and son. It introduces a set of possibilities and facts that investigators are going to have to spend a tremendous amount of time and effort winnowing through to figure out whether they're connected, whether they're not connected. With so many new questions and so few answers from investigators, many who thought they knew the friendly, wealthy, successful lawyer, Big Red, now wonder if they ever really knew him at all. And now the other shocking developments. Alex Murdoch has been charged with insurance fraud. It turns out that that whole shooting in the head thing, it was meant as a way for Alex Murdoch, he thought, to be killed by a gunman he hired and for his son to collect a $10 million life insurance plan. It all came apart when Alex Murdoch was shot, but he didn't die. And there is another turn in this investigation, and that has to do with the housekeeper, whose name is Gloria Satterfield. She had worked for them for 20 years in the Murdoch property, but then in 2018 suffered a trip and fall and died. At the time, her death was listed as natural causes. The coroner says, wait a minute, she has a problem with that. There was never an autopsy done, and a trip and fall is not a natural cause. Meanwhile, her family was supposed to receive a financial settlement. They say they never really got the money they expected. So the questions are, where did the money go? And there are so many other questions investigators are still looking into. Martin Savage, CNN, Hampton, South Carolina.